You ready? Yeah. I'm ready too. I'll count to three. You just look at the camera. After yeah. I've done the uh, short introduction, I'll turn to you and you will begin. I'll uh, talk to the camera or talk to you? You talk to me. Okay. And talk and also do increase your volume if you can. Yeah, sure. So that'll be nice. Uh, there's no one's around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> one, two, and three. Hi, welcome to the National Prince Choice Online News and welcome to the Steinberg Review. I'm Robin Steinberg and welcome to my show. And today we have a wonderful guest uh, all the way from Bali and he's here in Singapore to introduce some of his uh, new uh, cuisine and techniques at, at this new uh, wonderful restaurant uh, called the uh, Gastro Gig. And here I have a chef uh, who's from, all the way from Bali and he's none other than... So this first thing. Sorry, first thing. First thing. Restaurants first are Mama Sam Sarong and Gastro Gig is the one that's hosting us. Yes, it's been Will Merrick. Sorry, I'm trying to... We're going to take a second thing. It's just a... Just so, just so, no, right. Okay. Ah, okay. Two restaurants. What? And Good. just also, we just also released a cookbook as well. Ah, yes. The inspirations of, of Okay, cool. Well, that's something you've got you to say. And that's what we're doing up here to promote the cookbook, the cookbook with yes. gastro gig. Okay. But that's something that I can ask you. Yes. You ready? Yes. Second take? Take two. Hi, welcome to the National Prince Choice Online News and welcome to the Steinberg Review. I'm Robin Steinberg and welcome to my show. And today we have a special guest all the way from Bali. Yes, that's right, all the way from Bali. Uh, he's not other than Chef Will Merrick. Uh, he's here uh, to promote uh, his wonderful cuisine as well as his cookbook uh, at the uh, Guest Pro Geek. Now, we shall turn to uh, Chef uh, uh, Will to tell us more about it. Uh, Chef Will, welcome Hi. to my show. Thank and, you. You know, I'm so glad that you managed to soon buy Singapore. And, Always and, a pleasure. And uh, tell us more about uh, you know your inspiration behind uh, these two uh, wonderful restaurants you know, uh, based in Indonesia. Because you have the Sarong, and you also have the uh, Mama Sun. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what, what are they? Uh, I've been in Bali for about eight years now. Wow. Um, and I uh, lived in Australia and I always had a, a passion for Asian food. It was something that I think I watched too many Vietnam movies when I was a kid. Really? And uh, basically, uh, I, for me, it's, I've always wanted to be a, a war journalist or, or a, a war photographer and, and had a real passion for that. And Asia, for me, coming from Europe, is where it's, it's still raw in Asia, or it was 15 years ago when I, when I came to Asia or Australasia. So from that, I really got into cooking Asian food and I had a real passion for Asian mm -hmm. food. And so, you know, that's when uh, I started to do Asian restaurants in Australia. Um, and then I really wanted to understand the core of Asian food. So rather than, you know, read cookbooks and, and learn secondhand from different people, I really wanted to learn from the source. So I, I, I uh, left Australia and went to uh, Asia. So I did Bali. I've also in, in between time did Bangkok mm -hmm. and Thailand and also worked in Hong Kong as well um, and in Koh Samui. So I've kind of traveled quite a lot and also worked to really understand the essence of street food. Oh. And that is predominantly what those two restaurants are. Sarong is more street food brought into a very chic uh, restaurant environment. Mama San is your kind of Asian bistro, social media, chit chat kind of thing really? going on. Wow. Uh, and you know, I mean, Mama San is a development of what I've seen in Asia over the past three or four years since I opened up Sarong, which is four or five years old. Mama San is the new development of where I see Asian Asian food. And you know, beforehand, people used to think. That, you know, me cooking Asian is like me selling ice to the Eskimos, you know. Uh, and so it, it's uh, it's something where I, people, I think a lot of people didn't take, a lot of Asians didn't take Asian food seriously. Really? I think, you know. I think you guys took it, I think, like for example, Indonesian. Indonesian food is always looked upon as many be cheap, you know. So if you have the same ingredient in a Western dish, like a piece of beef or, or whatever it is, and you have the same ingredient that is beef as well. But if you cook it in Indonesian, it should be cheaper. If you cook it in a Western way, it should be more expensive. Huh. But the cost is still the same. It's the perception. Okay. And that is what we try and change. We try and make Indonesian food or Asian food or Thai food hip, cool, 
you know, we serve cocktails with it, just as you would serve cocktails in, in, in European style restaurants. We do um, champagne, we do different styles of service, fine dining service, quick and casual service, but basically making Asian food or Asian street food becoming fun uh, to be around. Now, let's come to the, the real point of this issue, uh, for this interview. Uh, why do you choose uh, no, uh, gastrobic cake to present your cuisine? I mean, gastrobic cake is, is new, funky, and, uh, and, and why gastrobic? Why not any other, you know, uh, blisters in Singapore? Um, well, you know, for me, I think that as for a gastrobic, uh, is young and is innovative in what they do in choosing locations that haven't been done before, choosing different locations from, from a, a secret location that I've yet to go and see, but I heard it's in Chinatown, versus doing other locations in hilltops or in, in, in different uh, areas. And I think, you know, it's, it's really giving Singapore a different perspective of, of it's not all about fine dining, it, it's also about the five senses which is feeling, uh, tasting, smelling, uh, seeing, um, what's the other five sense? Uh, hearing, you know, and by putting it in a different environment, in a different environment that's not from the music and from uh, lounge music or whatever, but put it into a traditional environment, which is what they do, I think that's something that's different. And that's why I've chosen to go with them. That's why I'm, I'm the one that's lucky that they've chosen me as well. Ah, guest to gig, right? Yes. Ah, so folks, please uh, do uh, look up at your website, uh, www.guestrogate.com for more information. And of course, uh, to explore uh, more of their cuisine and their confidence. Uh, by the way, uh, could you give us uh, three, three key reasons uh, why should someone like me you know, who is new to, uh, to your cuisine and to gastrogate. You know, why should we go there, you know, and uh, try uh, your, your wonderful new uh, uh, creations? Is there any uh, secrets uh, that you could share with us? Yeah, um, ironically, I think you, you hit the nail on the head, which is uh, trying my new cuisine. It's not new. Really? <laughs> it's, it's, it comes from the Ibu Ibus, it comes from the Nomyas, it comes from uh, the aunties and the uncles, as you say, in, in, in Singapore. Basically, my food has a story. And it's not my food, it's someone else's food. Like, for example, you know, you choose something as simple as like a clay pot, you know, a soy clay pot or, or a clay pot chicken. Where does that come from? Does it come from Singapore? It comes from mainland China. It comes from Guangzhou. It comes from wherever, but it's come from over hundred years it's come across back to Singapore Singapore's done their twist on it and we're just taking that environment out of that street walker into a cool and hip environment wow. so the food has actually got a story behind it so so how do you manage to learn all these uh, recipes and incorporate into your, your cookbook I mean did you, did you actually you know befriend somebody from Indonesia to give you a, a lecture unfortunately my wife never gets to sit beside five-star hotels drinking pina coladas and have a lovely <laughs> holiday she's up the mountain tops with me carrying camera bags and videos and all sorts of stuff cooking with old ladies and we really, we go right in there. I actually go and cook in the Warongs. If you look on my blog, mm -hmm. and if you look on my website, uh, Will Merrick, Street Food Chef, mm -hmm. you'll see all the journeys that I go. I go to Sri Lanka, I go to Burma, I go to Thailand. Really? And I video it all. I go to, I've been up to Aceh, I've been to Padang, I've been to Manado. So you wouldn't mind sweating and getting yourself dirty to get the recipe? Hygienic is when you get the hand with no gloves and you're there mixing it together, touching it and feeling it. You know, for me, it's, it's, it's food, food needs to be touched. And I, I, I really? find that, that, that sometimes food has become too, too clinical, <laughs> you know? Um, so, 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 do you, so do you consider yourself the old, probably one of the few Westerners who, who dare to explore and get dirty? I'm more Asian than you, really? <laughs> I would say. Basically, you know, my wife's Indonesian. I've got three kids that are half Indonesian. Um, I've been in, Indi in Indonesia for, for eight years, and you know, my my main my main mission is to is to re 
is to reintroduce or to, to, to bring back to life traditions. Everyone is so quick and furious about you know, going to, to McDonald's or going to Mr. Curry Puffs or all these fast food uh, concepts that live in Singapore. Even, even the hawker food in Singapore has, has lost its, its, its guts and its, and its ambience. It's still there, but it's got cleaner and a lot of the, the tokos, a lot of the shops have closed down now because it's not as, as popular as, say, the Ion sh uh, shopping mall or the Orchard shopping malls and the food courts there. So people have gone to accessibility rather than gone to traditional uh, styles of, of uh, food. And as, as, as things get more and more busier and people get busier in their lives, they don't have time to cook. So they don't have the interest in it anymore. Um, and I feel that a little bit about, uh, about everywhere. And that's why you know, I think a lot of these TV shows and a lot of, a lot of food is starting to, or food television is starting to, to come back to life. Because it's a form of socializing. Food is a, is a form of communication. It's a form of socializing. Mm -hmm. And people are going back to doing that. And as the economy is becoming harder, it's becoming more expensive, especially in Europe, the people are going back to entertaining their homes now. So I think that's why television and food televisions become more and more uh, popular. Now, what kind of recipes are you going to introduce at Gastro Cake? Everything that's out of my cookbook. I have ah. a new cookbook that I've just launched called uh, Sarong Inspirations. Oh, okay. Um, and basically this cookbook is some of the dishes are, a lot of them are out of the old ladies that I cooked with, the Ibu Ibus, and oh. the, the ladies I uh, befriended. Um, and some of the, the dishes are a little bit of a twist on it as well. Okay. Um, but you know the main and uh, I mean, the main thing of the book is that it's also a travel journey mm. of what it's like from a Westerner going to being Asian. Really? Are you really Asian? For me, I would. Pe people often say that I'm more Asian than really. Than, okay. Than have, Asian. You tried, have you tried the durian then? Love it. You really love it. Love it. Actually, we are. Uh, we have, we have quite a few dishes in the restaurant that are durian as well. Are we, are we going to see that at the gastro gate? Unfortunately, everyone likes, oh, likes, oh. likes durian. But if you come, I'll make some for you. No, if that's you not like fair. It, do you like it? <laughs> yeah, I do. I'll make it for you. But you know, a gastro gig, especially in Singapore, you just don't know who you're going to get. You don't know all walks of life will be coming now. It'll be some Westerners. It'll be some CEOs of, of KLM, I think, are going there. So there's all sorts of different people that are going there. So you've, and that's one thing that we try and do in the restaurant is that we, we don't cater for everyone. Our menu is what it is, but at the same time, there is something there on the menu for everybody. But if it's spicy, it's spicy. If it's sweet, it's sweet. If it's salty, it's salty. Now, how spicy can you take as a Western? I know most of us Westerners can't take too spicy. I can take a lot of spicy. Really? We yeah. should have a challenge on that. We should do, we oh, should yeah. do. So, folks, please, you have to watch this. If this guy can't take the spice, he loses. I lose, so, definitely. So. I have to eat a bowl of chilies so and I don't win. <laughs> How about the sambal blachang? I heard it. Really sambal blachang I like, but you know what really? I don't like is, is uh, I don't like trasi. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, I mean trasi is okay sometimes okay. In, in moderation, okay. but you know the sambal blachang and all that kind of stuff is uh, it's really? too much uh, shrimp paste. But give me anything that is just sambal or just spice, no problem. Okay, now first of all, People are wondering, what inspired you to be a chef? Why do you choose the life to be a chef, although it's hard? Um, you know what, it, it's funny, people ask me this, and, and there's, there's, I can tell you the glamorous version, and I can tell you the real version, you know? Both. Both. Um, I, think, I think, you know, for me, chefs are, or hospitality, uh, it's a trade. There's nothing glamorous about a trade, you're a brickie. You can be a laborer, you can be, you know, a blacksmith, it's a trade. Um, and unfortunately, I, I, I felt, you know, I, I wasn't very good at school. Um, and, um, you know, my mother said to me, William, you've got to, you've got to do something. Um, so I was, I was very good at sports, so I had an option to either go off and, and be a, a, you know, a professional skier. But the thing is, is that at the age of, of 25, if you do any, any professional sports, Basically, your day is done, you know, uh, where, you know, my mum said, everybody needs to eat. Uh, and so for me, it's, it's, I decided to do cooking, not because I loved it. 
I, I decided to do cooking because I needed to be in a structure um, and I needed that, that structure environment. I was a bit of a wild child and I needed, I needed structure and I needed you know, uh, people to, to put me into place. You know, being in the kitchen is the same as being in the army. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, it's not particularly pleasant, uh, it's fairly rough, um, especially more so back then in the UK it was fairly rough. Um, and you know, it's it's you don't get people with degrees cooking. You know, people people who cook generally have, don't have very much. Um, and so basically, I worked. I've got. I mean, I did one year training, I did a diploma, and then uh, when I was 17, and then basically worked my way up from the bottom to the kitchens, from all the way from London, uh, from Scotland to London to Australia then to Hong Kong and then back to Indonesia um, and it's not a it's it's something that uh, I learned to get a passion for um, it's something that where I got the passion was when I started traveling Asia that's when I got a real passion for the food and I think with, with Asian food what's amazing about it is that that street walker he does it every forget about glamorous food that street walker does it every day the reason why he does that dish every the way every day the way that he does do it is because he needs to eat to live, not live to eat. If he doesn't make his money at the end of that day on his bedjack or on his uh, kaki lima, and he's got no money to go home with his children. And that happens to 90% of street food vendors uh, in Asia. You know, well that whole glamorous kind of thing. That's 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 another side. That's that's AFC. That's that's travel and living. You know, that's all on TV. But reality is what that kakilima or what that street food vendor does, and they need to do that to make their bread and butter. To me, that is inspirational. Um, and you know, the 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 romantic side of, of things is that you know, I think that uh, being a, a, a chef now is being glamorized. People are taking shortcuts. To becoming a chef, um, so they go to call on their school. They do six months. You know, they have you know a, a rich background, so they set up a restaurant. There's no, there's no core, there's no heart and soul uh, into a lot of the the businesses. I think in in Asia, it's too easy to, to buy yourself a job. In Australia or in, in in the West, you start at the bottom and you work your way up, doesn't matter who you are and how much money you have, you can never buy yourself an education. You have to, in, in Europe or in Australia, you have to, you have to, you can't buy experience is what they say. And that is where, where the background that we come from is that it's all from experience and we've, we've taken 15, 20 years to get to that experience. Well, sounds like an expert, so are you planning to set up an association in, in Indonesia to do that? I'm not going to set up an association, but I am going to promote, you know, uh, a self enterprise for people. I, I would like to see my my bartenders or my commie chef have a sense of ownership, and for them to 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 be able to have the opportunity to own something of their own. Wow. Uh, and that is, you know, the only way that I grow is by having the team beneath me to grow. Um, and the only way that they can grow is if someone is, is there nurturing them and giving them, giving them the opportunities. Now, are you going to give the, the same experience to the staff or, or the team over at Gastro Gig? I don't know them for that long. <laughs> but you, but I'm, sure you're going, you're, I'm sure they're going to learn something from you. I hope so, I hope so, I hope so. So, so what, sure. do, what do you hope that, that the team uh, from Gastro Gig will learn from you? Uh, at the end of, of a week's uh, stay in Singapore? Um, I, hope, I hope that the team in Gastro Gig learn a little bit about... Um, no, hopefully, I, I haven't met the team yet, but um, you know, if, they are, if they are Asian, for them to, to perhaps fall in love with their heritage again, to perhaps uh, look at their own heritage, um, and to be able to, to look at street food in a, in a different light, yeah, um, because that's probably what we do with street food, and um, we bring it into a, into a restaurant-like environment. Um, so hopefully, by us working together, doing it in Chinatown, we'll have that glamour, the glamour street food uh, side of things. Is there one? Is there one ingredient that you're going to bring over to Singapore that you can't find? 
quite a few, I think. Yeah. Do you think there's one? Yeah, there is a uh, lemon basil coming in. I think it's available here, but really hard to find. Um, okay. You know, do you know lemon basil? Yes, I do. Yeah, coming it's, in. It's, it's hard to find here. It's hard. It's, it's, I mean, yeah. We went today, we found it in in uh, Chinatown, and not Chinatown, in uh, Thai Town, oh, okay. uh, in the Golden Triangle. Yes, that's right. We, we, we found it there, but all the other suppliers can't, can't find it. Oh, okay. so I think that's imported from Thailand, probably. Okay. Um, and then the other one is uh, Lemo. Oh, okay. You know, the little Indonesian small yes. green yes. plant. That's hard. That's hard as well. Uh, and so far, that was that was the main the main issue. Now, what are the three key lessons in life that you have learned that you would like to pass on to um, future young chefs who aspire to be to be to be uh, fitting in your shoes next time? Um, you got to work to get what you need or what you want. It doesn't come easy at you. Um, and also to have passion and to have heart. Everything comes from the heart. If you don't put your put, put your heart into it, uh, you won't you won't achieve what uh, what you could uh, achieve. And the third one would be to you know um, live life from a day to day uh, yeah. basis. Basically, you know as Many chefs said to me when I was training, you're only as good as your last service. Really? So if you had a bad service or you, you messed up or you didn't, uh, you got shouted at or whatever, you got to get up the next day and do it all over again and try and make that day better. Each day you got to make yourself better and better and better. Uh, whether it's from peeling the potatoes and peeling them quicker or peeling them with, with less meat when you're peeling it, with less of the potato, more of the skin, Basic, basic stuff. You just got to keep on trying. Now, before we let you go, about your cookbook. How long did it take you to actually create this wonderful cookbook and launch it here in Singapore? You know, and also, what is culture behind the cookbook? You know, how does one develop culture, you know, and heritage? Because I think a lot of Southeast Asians, including Singapore, uh, are trying to find their true identity, especially in food. So could you give us some uh, insight on that? Um. Uh cookbook first. Uh, how long did it take? The yeah. cookbook took two years. Two years? Why two, two years? years? It took a year and a bit to, to make and to put together um, because I, I, I went around looking from India, I went to Rajasthan, I went to Beijing, I went to uh, Shanghai, Bangkok, Cambodia to learn all these different recipes in there. Um, and so that's why it took, took about a year, a year and a bit to put together. And then at the same time, the, the, the original idea was not to sell it in bookstores, it was to sell it through the restaurants. Really? Um, and through, you know, uh, raffles or, or through St. Regis or through, the, through their gift uh, shops. Because, you know, the, the, the books, they take quite a, quite a large percentage of, uh, yes. of the um, cost on it. Or the profit, should I say, not the cost. And so therefore we decided to try and do it ourselves. But we felt that we'd put so much energy into the book uh -huh. that it would be a shame not to put it out there and promote it in the same way. Um, so therefore it took us about another nine months to find uh -huh. the right distributor and the right uh, publisher to publish it as well. Including Gastrogate. Including Gastrogate, yeah. exactly. Now, now, tell me, you know, what is the, the most challenging and probably most annoying uh, group of people that you have to learn uh, the recipe from. I mean, from which country or region? Because while well, you're putting all the recipes together from all the region, is there the one hardest one? Yeah, the hardest people that you have. <laughs> Indian. Oh, Indian. Oh, yeah. Because you don't know if they're saying yes or no. <laughs> really? <laughs> don't, 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 so you're not quite sure. Are we putting it? And also, it's up to you. Oh well, no, no. I want to know the recipe, sir. Can you give me the recipe? But you always get the uh, the nod. But apparently, you know, if they shake their head from side to side, that's apparently a yes. And the West, we shake our heads down and down and up, and that's the yes. So I learned that afterwards. I should have learned that beforehand. Have you tried Japanese? No, I've tried it, of course, but uh, I haven't I haven't gone into that realm yet of cooking. Uh, okay. That'll be my next uh, your, your next project. Next huh? project. But Japanese food it takes a long time to learn. You can't just pick that up. Oh. You know. And to go back with your with your story about the uh, the heritage and and culture and, and, culture and, and, and Singapore. I think you know everyone has to has to look deep in in to where they come from and where where the history is. You know there is there is culture everywhere. You just got to open your eyes and, 
and look at it and whether the culture has been amalgamated through religion, whether it's been through race, whether whatever it's been through, like, you know, Singapore has huge, huge culture. And if you went into, okay, even though it's a, a fairly new country, but if you go back to your origins, where you come from, if you go back to someone that's from Sri Lanka or from India, and you go back to their origins. So there's a huge story, not only from, you go from Singapore now to Singapore 100 years ago, and then you go back to where they came from even further. So there's lots and lots of culture. Huh. No, no, is there any really one dish that you can't live without every day? Yeah, Indomie. Really? Indomie? Indomie. Oh, Indomie. Indomie and a poached egg. Really? With, 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 with chopped chili uh -huh. and uh, chopped cabbage. Fantastic. Really? And a can of Coke to wash it down. <laughs> that's, that's when I'm hungover. <laughs> it has that instant, instant hit. The best one is the... Uh, the, the new uh, Indomie Rendang, fantastic. Oh, really? You gotta try it. I, I will. Fantastic. I will. <laughs> you know, I, I, I just can't wait for that. Now, speaking of which, uh, you know, are you, do you have any plans to do uh, your book tour after this? Uh, your, your yep, we will have promoted more in Indonesia as well. Um, and then uh, probably uh, we'll look at Malaysia. Uh -huh. Do you have a website for your, for your book tour or something? Uh, no, but we have uh, Will Merrick. Uh, dot com and we have Street Food Chef. Oh, okay. Those are the two blogs and uh, pages, uh, web pages we have. Is there one dish that you want all of our viewers to avoid when we come over to Indonesia? Because uh, is there any dish that you hate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? Airway. way. What's that? Dog. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go to Manado, yeah, and in Manado, I was up there and it's fascinating. I was eating bat, paniki. Bat. bat. I ate bat up there. It's in the Pasar Tamahon, which is the extreme food uh, market uh -huh. where they have dog, they have uh, monkey, you can eat monkey brain, you can eat um, bat, you can also have the shrub rat that they have mm -hmm. as well. Um, and it's quite horrific. They, you know, they, get, they get the animal out or they get the dog out, they smack it on the head and then they get the torch. And then they blow torch it, wow. um, and then uh, they they put it in stir fries. They put it in uh, braises um, and manado. They, they they eat everything, absolutely everything. So I I, uh, I encompassed it once, and uh, it's a bit like uh, wild boar. It's it, it's gay meat. It's, it's it's a pink pink meat, uh, oh. white meat. Okay, but. It's, it's whitey red, but it's, it's like boar. Boar is like a red meat, but it's it's still not like deer or anything. It's, um, but it's got a, quite a strong texture to it. So wow. it's, now, now, now that you're here in Singapore, what, was, what will be the one dish that you always look forward to? Uh, my favorite one is, of course, you can't go past the laksa. Oh, the laksa? You really? Can't, yeah, you can't go past that. That's, uh, that's the... Where, where do you get a good laksa in Singapore? Oh, yeah, it's hard. Uh, the one How about gastroke? Do they have laksa at gastroke? Uh, I, 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 I think they do. I think they do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think they can take me to a good laksa place. You know? Okay, well, you know, um, Chef, uh, well, thank you for joining us here. The thank you so stories. much. And uh, folks, thank you for joining me here with, uh, with Chef uh, Will uh, at the National Bill's Choice as well as uh, gastroke. And, uh, please do uh, visit them and uh, have a good week ahead. And once again, don't forget to join me on the National Bill's Choice uh, set uh, with Robin Steinberg. Bye. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. I'll edit that. And, uh, well, that is something. Oh, cool. Is it, is it cool? <laughs>